Okay. So we're going to go for it, then. Uh, we'll have to see how we want to do this, then. It is uh, usually a much better idea to actually have the forces at the rear attack first. It usually does make a lot more sense. But I think what we want to do here, then, is actually figure out what we're going to do. What is going to be our plan here? So, what we'll do, then, is we'll zoom out here. Switch to the different map bots. We're going to get rid of the units over here. Right, there we go. So, we can see the fortifications here. So... What we need to do then is we need to secure Bresatosk. So Bresatosk has to be secured first and foremost. That's a failed circle. Let me try that again. A bit. Uh, actually, I can make circles. What am I doing? How do you make a circle again? Okay. There we go. We've got a little bit of a circle there. Yeah, take a nice roll through the Russian countryside, indeed. <laughs> okay. So, we do have the rail lines over here. We're going to go up this rail line. And push towards Minsk. What we want to do then is actually get our forces in place. We can actually go for a large pocket. You can definitely you can definitely achieve a pocket of all the forces in the center here on the first turn. You can do it. Uh, what we're going to have to do is figure out how we do it from the north over here. But it can be done. But yeah, we'll do it uh, We'll do it front by front, really. But it starts with Brest of in my opinion. Right. What I could do then is actually enable ground support once again, so we'll allow ground support. There might be some assets that can actually do that. I'm going to start with the call over here, in fact. What I could do, because a lot of these forces over here really are needed, what I could do is actually split these units up into different... Yes, yeah, so you can see I can break down the 200... Uh, sorry, no, the 23rd Division into different uh, regiments. Those are the three regiments over here that make up the 200... Uh, oh, God damn it. The 23rd Division. I'm tempted to say the 223rd Division because I see this, but indeed the 23rd Division. So I could break that down into the constituent regiments and actually spread them out here because the Soviets are not going to be attacking here. So that's one thing that we can actually do there. And I think that's what we're going to try to do then is try to reorganize. But if I spend all my time moving these forces down here, it's not going to be well, uh, not going to be worthwhile. So we'll take a look. We'll take a look here. So we do have this division here, the 113th Rifle Division. Uh, they're actually in a town, which is not exactly ideal. Uh, we do have the ability to actually just cross the river over here, because it's not actually occupied, neither is this position here. Uh, so we'll look to exploit weaknesses in their lines and just get around them. It's probably better just to leave these divisions and actually just attack them when they've run out of supplies, really. But I think um, we do have this core. Alright, okay, so we do have this core, the L11. One core? I forget what that is in Roman numerals now. Uh, we do have that one we can actually make use of. So I'll have that move out to the rail line there. Right. This uh, division here actually has lower morale than the others. 112 is uh, pretty low morale. Our national morale, so this is like the base morale of our units, is actually no. Where do I go ahead and check that? in here. I forget we check the uh, base level morale now. I forget. Where do we check that? It's somewhere, but I can't remember where it is. <laughs> it's somewhere. Okay, let's take a look then. So we do have these units over here. They could move out. And what I want to do then is I, I want them to actually push these units aside over here. I don't want to move these units at all because I don't want to have them waste any of their points. I could potentially have them attack over here, cross through to the town. The issue is this division's in the way. The 49th Rifle Division is in the way. That's going to limit their ability. It might be potentially worthwhile to actually... Well, what I might be thinking here is have these divisions move up over here. We might want to go ahead and push this uh, Rifle Division out of the way. I could potentially do that. I could do that with support from the divisions over here in the north, perhaps. But if I can push that division out of the way, that gives us a little bit more, a uh, little bit more leeway over here, really, possibly. But it might just um, come down to pushing the security division, the um, NKVD. No, that's not security. That is a fortified region. Uh, pushing the fortified region out of the way. Fortified regions, when they're overrun, they're just gone. Uh, so it should be pretty easy. We'll have the ability to do that, which would then give. Uh, these divisions down here are much easier time, but I could use them to follow up and then take care of the security division, ideally. Uh, no, uh, I'm using a free tool. This, uh, I've got a paid version. This is called Epic Pen. 
Uh, you can download it. I need to update it. But it's quite good. I really like it for games like this. But you can play in windowed mode. You see, it helps to explain things. It helps to make things visually um, interesting as well. I can actually try and explain myself and draw it out. Okay. So I could move there and have 10 points left. That's 9 points. Uh, so we have 10 there. Yeah, you, you probably should uh, try it out there, Kishan. It's definitely worthwhile doing. Okay. So I can't move here to the south. Uh, we'll go ahead and do this then. Have them march. Right. Have the second division moved up here. 293rd. Now the core has a heavy uh, level worth of battery assigned there. That is a really long name. <laughs> Finrod Felagund Finoldor. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, do you use re reconnaissance planes to scout in the head? I did have reconnaissance planes do like a general sweep of the area beforehand, but uh, it's actually a good idea to potentially have them do it on uh, specific units. So what we could actually do here then is run reconnaissance on this. You can see that we actually have a lot of reconnaissance that hasn't been used. Yeah, you can see there's a lot here. In fairness, I can have the AI run that. Uh, we'll go ahead and run a far, yeah, far more reconnaissance. Thank you very much for the prompt. I might have forgotten about that otherwise, so we'll run more reconnaissance. Let's go ahead and put that message level 0, 1 on there so can see where they're going. You can see that they are revealing uh, positions, divisions that have previously been known. Okay. Let's see then, has that actually improved our detection here? 8, 9, let's try it more. You can see that they're being used. Yes, the air aspect is the part that I'm weak, it's not really. Okay. So we do have the 28th Rifle Corps behind there. I'm not saying that making a big difference right now. But we do have pretty good detection. Uh, decent detection over here. Okay. So I don't know what the 3 out of 20 means, actually. That's something I'm not uh, not really aware of. Uh, but what we can do here, then, is actually use the forces we did move. So we have them um, over here. Now, I could go ahead and go for a planned attack. And to be honest, I always feel like... <laughs> I always feel like you regret it when you don't use planned attack. Because you have two different types of attacks here, really. You have the hasty attack, uh, which uses less uh, less movement points, we'll, see, uh, we'll say, so less MP. But it isn't as uh, as effective as a planned attack, which you have by pressing the shift button. You can also press this button over here, which locks it on. Um, oh. I always feel like I'm going to regret it, but it is a fortified region. We should be able to handle a fortified region with the 112th Division. What I might do is have the 112th Division launch a planned attack against the uh, 62nd Fortified Region here to make sure it succeeds. Now, before I do that, what do you guys feel like? Should we get into the eye? Should we get into the motions of always using planned attacks to make sure things actually do succeed where able and when it makes sense, or do we kind of go for the uh, for the wild the wild side there? <laughs> what do you guys reckon? Oh dear. So I feel like I'm going to regret it, but if I have something to blame, I'll feel better there. <laughs> Hasty. Oh, Vulcan, don't you enable me. Don't you enable me. But yeah, you're probably right there. <laughs> yeah, take a walk on the wild side. Okay. If it fails, I'm going to blame each and every one of you. <laughs> I could assign them some additional support, but I don't think we need it. It's a majority of flak as well. They should, they should. I just have flashbacks of Soviets having plus one defense. Uh, when I did a, another campaign and that did not go well. <laughs> okay, but the 112th is actually pretty big. It's got 16,000 men. We have the 293rd, which is actually uh, 13,000 men there. Right, let's go for a del not deliberate attack, a hasty attack. Okay, it succeeded. <laughs> okay. I suppose that is going to happen. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's just me being really nervous. Okay. But there we go. We have our first attack. It's only taken nearly an hour and a half for that to actually happen. If I can click on this button over here, so F11. So you can see this actually shows you um, via icon. So you can see where we've had reconnaissance, uh, where we've had airfield attacks. Uh, yes, if you look over here, but uh, Tiger's been observed by reconnaissance there. You can see that we actually do have the attacks over here. So I can actually go ahead and click on this. And I can click on the actual show details. So you can see the attacking division, uh, attacking forces, sorry. You can see the commander, uh, combat value 54 down to 24.9. Uh, combat value 2 down to 1.8, qualifications from 2.10 to 0, their commander, there you go, there's a lot of details that can be seen here. You can see the amount of men that were launched, you can see the, the odds were 13.83 to 1, so I suppose I was a little bit worried there, for no reason. Uh, destroyed and damaged. Average morale, experience fatigue, the amount of ready elements, obviously air support, but we didn't have any air support. Uh, do the Soviets have any air support? The Soviets didn't have any air support either. I wonder why. I wonder what could have been the problem there. But yeah, there's a lot of detail you can actually get. This is why I'm very much looking forward to War of the East 2 to have more of a tactical operational side. Uh, as opposed to the um, operational. Okay, so we have our first breakthrough there, which is excellent. Now, they actually have a lot of movement points there. We could attack this position here and it would be probably worthwhile doing. Uh, they do have a defensive value. I can't recall if the 14 is... I think the 14... It might be the 5. I forget which way it goes, actually. <laughs> which is not great. Uh, especially not great when you're going to be making important attacks. But what I can do then is I can actually commit the uh, core over here. So we do have the 13th core. Construction battalions that are attached only. Uh, so we could potentially use the uh, 13th Corps, uh, divisions of the 13th Corps, to actually attack this position here. And that's not an easy position to take on, really. It's in light woods, there's a river, fortifications of the sea. It's not that bad, I guess. But it is a division. I think we'll go for it. I can give one division. So we have 17th Division, we have 78th Division. Uh, we'll go with the 17th Division. Have them move up to that position over here. Okay, what I'm going to do then is actually move this core within range. Okay. So, what I can do then is I can actually hold shift down and I can actually select uh, divisions from multiple hexes over here. So, what we're going to do then is we are going to take the... Uh, I think the 112th division. The 112th division can actually launch a plant attack. We could have the 112th Division, we could have the uh, 17th Division actually attack together. Now, whether or not that will be enough is a uh, different question. So we have 23 combat value, we have 15 combat value there. It might be potentially worthwhile to use another division, so it might be worthwhile to use the 293rd Division there. They might be worthwhile doing. That would definitely bring our odds up quite considerably. Um, how do you guys feel? Do we, do we want to go for like a 2 Division... Uh, deliberate attack, or, or do we go for three divisions and try to ensure that it actually works? The enemies in like forest, they have a lot of two fortifications. It is a uh, rifle division. Its morale isn't great. It's not that experienced. It's got decent amount of supplies. It's got fuel. Units attached is green. I don't know what that means. <laughs> it might be worthwhile going for uh, maybe two divisions. Two divisions could probably do it. I think three divisions would definitely do it. And it might be worthwhile to go for the three division malarkey just to ensure that it actually happens, really. Uh, how do you guys feel about that? Do we go for two divisions? Do we go for three divisions? Uh, do we launch tactical nuclear weapons against it? Send one division across. Uh, we could send one division across, but the issue is... This being newly conquered, uh, it is actually a... Uh, there's a it, it's more AP to move in there. Yeah, bring in the kitchen sink. Uh, due to the fact that we have this division over here as well, that actually impacts on their zone of control, which makes it even more expensive to move. So we're actually better off actually attacking over here and then moving across because we'll not have as much effect on our uh, AP cost there. Yeah, bring in the kitchen sink, yeah. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? The kitchen sink. 
<laughs> you jog chats that way. <laughs> and if we bend the cross after, yes, there you go. Somebody can actually explain it much better than I can, but. Okay. So we'll use the divisions there. So we have the 112. Uh, right, that's correct. 112, 293rds. 134th is not part of the core I want to use. Uh, part of the attack. Then we have 17th division. So we do have them attacking from two hexes over here, but no. Three divisions. We're going to go with a plant attack. So we'll engage. And we succeed. Yes, and we push them back. Excellent news. Okay. So we have 5.9, 5.19 to 1 odds there. Now, I think that was worthwhile. I think maybe two divisions might have handled it still. Uh, but at least this way. So we lost 232 men, 13 pieces of artillery. Uh, they lost a thousand men. Yeah, I think it was well worthwhile to make sure we push them back. Yeah, that was a tough division here. Well, this is it. Uh, it did have core artillery regiments there. So it had the 447th, the 455th, the 462nd. Uh, no air support. We actually did have air support this time. We had 45 fighters and 38 bombers actually yeah, assigned to help us, which is good news. I'm quite happy that I actually did enable air support there, so that does make a difference. Air missions. So, you can see their air missions, 123, I don't know, what, units, assets, I don't know how it works there with cannabis. But you can see that we did have uh, bomb there, 123, escort 47. Oh, oh, this is from earlier, this was the airfield attack, okay. I was thinking that's odd. Uh, yes, okay. Forces engaged, airfield was bombed. Hang on a second, am I looking at the right one here? Forces engaged, airfield was bombed. Right. Right, okay, there we go. We're on the right one now. I'm thinking, wait a minute, what? <laughs> right, there we go. So, 38. Yeah, so that just gives you the total number of bombers there. Air missions. Okay, air missions. Right, okay. So, 38 bombers, 45 escorts. Damage, destroyed. Okay. I'd have to look into how this actually impacts on the, uh, on the battle, but it was worthwhile. You can see that we have the 5.19 to one odds there. So that was worth it. That was well worthwhile. 122 to 33.7. 280. So we did have the odds, but I think it was worthwhile. They were reduced down to 175.2. There's a lot of detail here that I haven't yet... Uh, you can actually see the aircraft here by pressing that button. That I haven't yet... Um, worked out because I've just not played it as much as I should have really. Uh, but there we go, so we have that initial successful attacks. We do also have the 112th with the ability to continue to move here. We have the 293rd with the ability to move as well, which is good news, very good news. Now I do have the 78th division, which is part of the 13th core, which can actually move on up. So you can see if I move here, that's 8, that's 8. If I move here, that's 0. But what I'm going to do then is I'm going to move the 78th infantry division here. And I'm going to have them move up and actually uh, engage the security division over here, which is the 17th NKVD Border Regiment. So we're going to have them move up over this way. There we go. And I will be able to hasty attack that. So you can see they have 50 movement points remaining here. We have crossed the border into Soviet territory. The war has truly begun. And we are going to launch a hasty attack. Now, the 78th Division has no additional support. What I love about this is you can actually go into the uh, table equipment here. You can take a look. We have, okay, so we have two SDKFCs, uh, two, two, ones. And my, and my friend Richard York, uh, do check him out on YouTube, by the way. He really, really loves the SDKFC 222s. He really loves them. I don't know how it feels about the 221, but I imagine he's got a soft spot there. You can see that we do have the rifle squads, 39. You can see their actual equipment there, the actual squad, which is really awesome. Uh, cavalry. Pioneer. And just like rifles there, and G34s. It's really awesome. It is really awesome to actually see this sort of information. If I go into the, uh, oh, not bad. If I go into the actual table equipment, and if I go to the upgrades, uh, we can see how they do evolve over time, which is awesome. So in 185 turns, we'd have the, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, from the 41C Infantry Division to the 45 Grenadier Division. Uh, you can see how it changes. You can see the numbers there drop pretty dramatically. Uh, you can see there from the 41C. Uh, so the 43rd Storm Division, you can see Storm Division, you can see they're dropping in terms of men, uh, dropping once again there pretty dramatically. 
However, by this point, we have far more firepower, we just don't have the personnel, really. I've been playing Flashpoint campaigns, Red Storm, over the last of us two lately. Yeah, um, Flashpoint campaigns, I've got that, I just haven't given it the time, unfortunately. And it's a good game, I have played it, it's a good game. I just, I don't know, I've just not given it the time, unfortunately. So going for a haste attack, yeah, uh, we send them to another realm of resistance as the 17th NKPD has been shattered. Uh, which, as you can imagine, is good. Right. So you can see that we actually do have the ability to continue to move now. Now, the good news is, if I push up over here, this core headquarters will run away. Essentially, these are not combat units. They will just bugger off. What we could potentially do, then, is head to the north, and I don't particularly want to do that. What I want to do, then, is try to get as far to the rear as possible. Really cause some problems there. Now, the 23rd... Sorry, 28th Rifle Corps... I don't know if it's their headquarters. I'd imagine it's probably the headquarters of the units in Vesatorsk. So what we could actually do here, and this is what's fantastic about this, because you guys saw previously that we did have core level artillery actually assigned to the Soviet rifle division there. So if we can actually push back that core headquarters, which is where presumably the core level artillery units might actually be residing, we can push away their support, which is very, very good. So when we do launch the battle for Vesatorsk, uh, they're going to be ideally, ideally denied said artillery. That's what I like there. So we're going to have the 78th move. You can see that unit has been moved out of the area. Now. So we've moved there with the 78th Rifle Division. Okay, now we have these divisions over here. We do have the other division here. Uh, which, uh, uh, which is the uh, 17th Rifle Division. You can see I could move over here. And I could move to that position there. Um... But what I might do is actually leave that unit and have it spread out, potentially. But if I take a look over here then, so... We do have 112. 112 could move this way. The 293rd could actually move a little bit further on. But that's kind of like the, uh, the limit of our progress here. It might, in fact, be worthwhile to continue to push on here. Because if we continue to push on, you can see that we do have the... Um, so I'm going to assume that is the 28th core. I didn't quite see actually where it did go there. But that is likely 28th core. I'd have to double check. We do have the 131st Rifle Division over here. Uh, Infantry Division, actually. Which could actually push in much deeper. But what we'd like to do as well is actually have the ability to move in here. And actually attack with the toss from multiple directions. Because that's going to definitely help us out. So what we're going to do then is we're going to move a hex. You can see that we are... We've got an interesting one. We've got zone of control. Not in these places, but I do have zone of control over here. I'm going to push on once again. And now I want to take a head, uh, sorry, take a note here. So bear this number in mind then, guys. 3,528. Bear that in mind. Uh, what I'm going to do here then is actually snip, snip, snip. So we'll snip this so we can actually bear this in mind. A really good tool, that snipper tool. Really, really good tool. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and push onto the actual airfield over here. You can see there's a number of aircraft over here. Uh, or there was, anyway. <laughs> There's none more. Uh, none no more. Push up there. Uh, 3528. Yeah, so that airfield was empty. We didn't capture any fuel there. But that was a dead airfield, then, essentially. But we do push that airfield out of position, which is good news. Right, so we've achieved that little bit of a breakthrough here. What we want to do, then, is uh, go ahead and look to get around here. Okay. Uh, this is Grand Grimsby's War in the East. Great game, really. I'm using it with uh, various number of map mods over here. You can definitely find them. This is called uh, Rainy Day by ChemKid. Uh, this one, I can't recall the name of. It's been a few months, actually, since I actually downloaded it. But I will try to... I will endeavor to try and find the name of the map mod. So it is fantastic. I really do like the look of it. Okay. Now, what we could potentially do then is actually push these divisions across here, then to actually solidify control and actually try to reduce the uh, zone of control. What you want to do here as well is try to have a free hex wide uh, corridor, and that really helps uh, supply make it through there. It is worthwhile doing that. Right. So I do have a 17th division here. Uh, what I might actually want to do then is have the 17th Division attack this position here. The 113th Rifle Division is actually much, much weaker. Yes, much weaker there. One free. I think free might be the actual defensive value. I can't recall. But what I can do here then is actually have the 17th Division here attack. 
There you go, Purge. You've read my mind. Right, so we do perform a planned attack, and we do succeed. We do force the 113th Rifle Division back. You can see that they all deserve a 4.32 to 1, so you can see that uh, 17th Rifle Division had a good time there. So what I could do now, then, is we only have one hex worth of movement. I could potentially reposition said division, or even potentially have it head back, uh, so it can actually take on some supplies, uh, potentially uh, recuperate to some degree. It might be worthwhile to push onto this hex over here to actually make it difficult for the Soviet forces here. Uh, because even if they're moving away, they're still going to have to uh, suffer a zone of control penalty. But in fairness, I don't think it's worthwhile doing so, at least not yet. What I can do then is take a look over here. It still has a decent amount of movement. You can see that we do have the 134th Rifle uh, God, Infantry Division, which can obviously move on a decent distance. Obviously, you want to take as much control of this area as you can. I'm going to have the 112th Rifle, God damn it, 112th Infantry Division move up there. How you doing there? Yo, 5300, good to have you, my friend. Indeed, happy birthday and welcome. Glad to have you. I feel so awful, we only have 53 minutes, 52 minutes now. But I really like this game. I'm going to have to play this game. I will be continuing the series on my channel as well, actually. As we'll have a 112th Infantry Division move up here. So we do see the 31st Tank Division, which is in a pretty shocking state, very so I got 1 1. Our 49th Division looking pretty good. Okay, so we have cleared a little bit more territory. Hello there, friend, friend Franciscus. Good to have you, my friend. It's awesome to have these numbers, by the way. Glad to see you all. Uh, if you guys are interested, uh, my channel is XTRG on YouTube. <laughs> it would be appreciated if you do go ahead and pop over and uh, pay me a visit. <laughs> Uh, that sounds like a mafia sort of thing. Okay, so I could move there. And that would secure control of the hex, but it's not going to do me too much good. What I'm going to do then is, in fact, I'm going to move up to here to this hex. Now, we don't take control of these zones here. We don't take control of these hexes right now. But that's not too bad. I'm in a position here where I can actually have additional infantry units move to the rear of Brasotosk, which is very helpful. What we're likely going to do then is actually have the 167th, though in fairness I could even have the 167th actually not, uh, uh, actually not take part in the attack on Brestatos. We could potentially use other divisions to uh, enable, enable success. It would likely be wise to secure the zones, uh, secure the actual hexes around Brestatosk, uh, so that if they do, well if they do fail, if they do try to retreat, they instead surrender. Cavalry is fantastic. Cavalry has so much movement there. We do have the 213th Security Division that can actually move up into that position there, uh, which is pretty good and I think well worthwhile. So we're going to have the 213th uh, Security Division move into that position there. It's not going to actually join the battle, but what I want it to be there for is to actually control that hex and actually to prevent a Soviet retreat. You can see it actually does, uh, I think it actually does have a real impact on their defensive capabilities as well. So let's take a look then. So we do have the core over here. So I do have 17th Infantry Division there and there. It might be a wise idea to move them up somewhat. Okay. Now I could have them move to that position there. I could leave them in position and move up the units first. Um, perhaps. Oh, that's awesome there. Thank you very much there, man. That's awesome. Yes, I will be doing a uh, a series of War of the East Key giveaways on my own channel. I do it here, but I don't know how to do it. <laughs> I'm not technical like that, unfortunately. But you guys will definitely still be able to get access to the keys uh, by actually following each episode as I do release it. And then what I'll do is I'll give away a key for each episode. I forget how many I have, uh, but I have a few. Obviously, you do have to redeem them in the Matrix store. Right. So I could move there, but I think I'm going to go ahead and move to this position here. Actually free up the zone of control over here and actually allow these units to actually move. So move 17th division there. I know I said I wasn't going to do it, but actually, no, nah, I think that's fine. We can do that. Right, so you can see that we have 131st division. That is actually in a good position to move. Um, this core is actually in a great position. So what I might do then, we have 131st, which could move... Uh, to this position over here and still have 50 points, maybe? You can see that this is a problem here, so what I'm going to do then... The issue with that is it does reduce the amount of units I can actually have in that position. But I think it's worthwhile if it opens it up and actually makes it easier for us to move. Yeah, they're still moving around here because that's the most... 
yeah, okay, apparently that makes more sense. Okay, fair enough. Well, okay. It is what it is then. Uh, shame we didn't take that. What I'm going to do then is have the 131st Rifle... God, I'm going to keep saying it. We're going to have the 131st Infantry Division move over here then. I'm essentially going to be using this core over here. Or is that uh, 10? Oh god, that's too, that's too small for me to see that. Let me try and make that bigger. Right, so 10, 20, 30, 40. So the 43rd core is going to be used to spot the attack of Resetorsk. Then we'll have the infantry divisions cross over here. Well, the single... Actually, I don't know if I'm going to have the 167th division do that. I could have the 252nd division move here, and I think I'm going to do that. I could have 252nd move to this position here. What it might actually be worthwhile doing then is... We'll have 252nd move to that position there. In fairness, I could have had them move there, but then uh, it's too late now. Uh, 134th can also move here, then. Well, let's take a look, then. So, uh, 24, 24, 16,000, 16,000. Yeah, they're roughly about the same, anyhow. So, I'm going to have the 134th division move up to this position here. Now, I will have the 131st division move up over here to the rear. This might not be the most optimal way to do things, but we'll see. Okay. Now, I think we'll go with that. I can have the three divisions here attack of the 12th Corps alongside support from these forces over here. So if I take a look, you can see that we do have these forces. And they can all engage in a deliberate attack. I do have forces over here that could actually uh, support us if we wish to do so. But I don't think I need it. I think we will possibly be able to manage it. I do have the infantry divisions over here that could be potentially used in it. I knew you before you streamed Sliverin. Ah, oh, that's awesome, my friend. Yeah, the great games. I'm looking forward to having the new one in the future when that comes out.